They said that you had abandoned him as a baby. I did not abandon my child. You'll be 50 today. Who is it? Hi, I'm Tara Lockery Grant for RT10. I'm here in Dublin's Marion Hotel where Steve Coogan, the star and co-writer of Philomena, is about to come in and join us. So, Philomena, how did it come about that you got involved with this project? Well, uh, I read an article in a newspaper, in the Guardian newspaper, about four years ago, um, about uh, Philomena Lee uh, and, and, and a book that had been written by ex-BBC correspondent Martin Sixsmith. Um, and the article was the Catholic Church sold my child and I just became intrigued by it and I, I read the article and, that, and it, I found it very moving I was moved to tears and uh, and I, I immediately thought it's a story I wanted to tell and I was looking for a project that was different from just the broad comedy that I've been doing and so um, that's how it started I secured the rights to the book and uh, hooked up with a co-writer um, with the help of my co-producer and and um, and then I started writing the, the screenplay not not really based on the book but based based on uh, um, Martin and Philomena and, and this search for her long-lost son. I know this woman, she had a baby when she was a teenager and she's kept it secret for 50 years. And what you're talking about uh, would be what they call a human interest story and that's, I don't do those. Why not? The artistic license really is, is only in terms of imagined dialogue. Uh, the fundamentals of the story are very true in that uh, Philomena um, was looking for her son and her son was looking for her and they both returned to the uh, abbey in Roscray where uh, this laundry uh, had been based and uh, the, the information that they were looking for each other was kept from them by the nuns and, and they didn't tell either of them that the other was looking for them. I like things that talk about serious issues uh, but I, lo I, like, I love comedy too and comedy to me uh, as, as, a, as a tool or a device to uh, it, it, to enhance or uh, make difficult subjects more palatable. Um, it's far more interesting than just comedy as, as an end in itself. Fleetwood Mac, and this was Alan Partridge. Love that noise. When you're walking down the street at home, is it? It's, are you still getting Partridge isms shouted at you? Has that happened yet here? Uh, well, I, went, I just got off the plane. Oh, but, uh, not yet then. And, and whisked, I'll do one. They, they whisked me through a VIP uh, uh, exit to the car, so so that no one could shout our heart at me. Um, yeah, it happens. Uh, yeah, it, ha it still happens. It happens quite a lot. But you know, um, it, and it's sort of sometimes I get, I'm sort of slightly irritated by it. But other times I think, well, you know, the, the, if they weren't shouting our high, you know, you wouldn't be paying your rent. Identify yourself, Alan. Alan. Chris Puddich. Alan. I'm Alan Partridge. I've not been off the TV that long. Identify yourself. With Ireland, you've a special relationship and connection here. I believe you do a mean Mayo accent. Can I have a little? Well I, I, well, I did, there's a series called Moon Boy, which uh, my company uh, uh, produced, and uh, I did play a character in that called uh, Fancy Feely, and I got a chance to do my Mayo accent. But it wasn't particularly sympathetic. I mean, it, 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 I've got to be very careful the way I do it, because I've got lots of family in Mayo. But in Mayo, they, 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 they talk like that all the time, you know, there's, 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 and there's a certain musicality to it like that, but all. So. Yeah, I'm very good, and I, I will can't hide my laughter. <laughs> Tell me this, the trip to, I believe, we're going to be in for a treat. Italy. Uh, yes, the, the, we did a second series of the trip, uh, Rob Bryden and uh, myself, uh, we, and, and Michael Winterbottom directed it, and it was, uh, it was fantastic, it was a wonderful experience. Um, um, you know, ultimately it's good natured, you know, Rob and I um, like each other, and, uh, and we are different, but we sort of, you know, vive la différence, as the French say. <laughs> I am not an animal. A real little treat for anyone who hasn't found it or discovered it. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it's very. I'm, it's a very. I'm, I'm surprised that you mentioned that. It's a, it's an animated series that Peter Bainham, who wrote Alan Partridge uh, many years ago with me, uh, an animated series he did for Baby Cow, and I and I do two of the voices in it, and I loved it, the series. I thought it was fantastic, and, and I was a huge fan of it. But it um, it sort of, uh, as they say, flew below the radar. I just want to talk to you about my son. He was taken from me. And I've been looking for him ever since.
So Steve, the story is quite shocking, but how much of this whole area would have been known in the UK? It's quite shocking for Irish audiences, but we knew quite a bit. But what about over there? Uh, some some girls in, the, in the, those laundries were l looked after, but there are also a lot of awful stories of, of uh, abusive behaviour. And um, and but the film itself isn't isn't really. I didn't want to get into a big kind of uh, retrospective moan about. Uh, uh, badly behaved nuns in laundries, uh, that's sort of too e easy and it's not really the point of the film. The film's about um, how you deal with tragedy and, and, and uh, the meaning of, of faith and, and whether people who have no faith are any wiser than people who have faith. And it's, it's sort of like an open discussion, the film. So while it does deal with some very serious issues, just as the poster indicates, Philomena is also a great uplifting, heartwarming drama. Check out the review on RT10. Thanks a million for watching.